Hello students, let's continue with the chapter Mineral and the Power Resources. Power Resources Power or the energy is the primary input in the production of goods and services. The will of the progress move with the flow of energy. The one of the important element in raising the standard of the people of the country's population is the provision of the ample supply of power. Understood? In a sufficient amount, that also. So the more regular and the ample is the availability of the energy, more even will be the path of economic prosperity also. So the role of energy has significantly increased with the increase in the industrialization and urbanization in the present day society. Now, in the earlier days, the power was confined to the kitchen as a fuel okay, for household cooking. But now energy is a major input in such as, you know, in the sectors such as industries, commerce, transport, telecommunications, okay. Now, depending upon its source and utilization, energy can be divided into two broad categories. They are the non-renewable energy resources and renewable energy resources. Non-renewable energy resources are those resources which once were used cannot be easily renewed or replenished. They are exhausted quickly and are known as exhaustible energy resources also. Okay, and it will take millions of years to form those kinds of non-renewable resources. For example, coal, petroleum and natural gases. Another is the renewable energy resources, means which can be renewed or which can be replenished by the physical, mechanical or chemical processes also. They are also known as inexhaustible power resources. The best example for the non-renewable uh, energy resources are the solar energy, wind energy, wave, tidal energy, geothermal as well as hydroelectricity also. Okay, this can be renewed or replenished. Energy may also be classified as conventional and non-conventional depending upon its nature. Coal, petroleum, natural gas, electricity are the main source of conventional source of energy and uh, geothermal wind tidal solar are the outstanding example of the non-conventional sources of energy we are going to discuss some of the conventional sources of energy in this video like the coal uh, petroleum and the natural gas coal is an inflammable organic substances composed mainly of hydrocarbons and found in the form of sedimentary rocks and it is capable of being used uh, for the supply of heat as well as light both also okay and it also contains the volatile matter uh, like moisture and uh, ash in a varying proportion combustible matter which is present in the coal is the carbon and hydrogen now coal was in and will continue be the main power generation in india it constitutes about 60 percent of the total commercial energy consumed in the country the power sector and the uh, iron and steel industries and other industries consume 94 percent of the total consumption understood so due to its high utility as a source of energy and as a raw material for large number of other products it is also termed as black gold now the origin of coal now coal has originated from the organic matter of food large tracts of forest land okay and the uh, land animals was buried under the sediments in the geological past that is during the carboniferous age okay around 200 and 300 million years ago okay so it was burned and decomposed due to the heat from beneath the earth's surface as well as the pressure of the overlying sediments okay eventually turn that forest land and animals okay that organic matter into the sedimentary rock that is known as coal now the capacity of the coal to give energy also depends upon the percentage of the carbon content in it so according to it the grade from the highest to lowest falling four varieties of coal are generally recognized first one is the anthracite coal which is considered to be the highest graded coal okay and this is the best quality coal which contains more than 80 percent of carbon contained in it it is very hard compact and the color is jet black okay and it ignites very slowly but it will burn for a long period of time and burns with a blue flame 
understood so it has the highest heating value and is the most prized among all the varieties of coal and in india it is found only in jammu and kashmir that also two in a small quantity that is the characteristics of the minerals isn't it uh, higher the quality lower the quantity next is the bituminous coal now this is most widely used coal and continue and contains about 60 to 80 percent of carbon it is dense compact brittle and usually a black color it has also has a high caloric value and due to its high proportion of carbon contained in it it also you know burns uh, very uh, properly okay and uh, the bituminous coal is not only used for the steam raising or the heat purposes but also in the production of coke or the gas also coke means in the iron and steel industry and so it is utilized so it is generally found in the states of jharkhand odisha west bengal chhattisgarh and madhya pradesh in india another variety of the coals are the lignite which is also known as brown coal and it is in the intermediate state okay like from the organic matter into the coal Okay, and it contains around 60% uh, of carbon and represents the intermediate state as I said. It colors varies from dark to black brown. Okay, and uh, this qualities make it liable to disintegrate on exposure even in the spontaneous combustion also. So it is mainly found in the areas of Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Assam and some parts of Jammu and Kashmir also. The last, uh, the least variety of the coal is the peat. Now, this is the first stage from the transformation in the transformation from organic matter into the coal. Okay, so more or less it is hood only. So it contains very less amount of carbon, less than 40%. And, you know, it is uh, compact to make a good fuel when it is compressed to make bricks. Understood. So if it is left to itself, it will burn like a hood and you know emits more amount of smoke gives less heat understood and leaves a lots of ash after the burning okay so this is considered to be the lowest grade of the coal and uh, students those are the four varieties of the uh, coal so uh, the occurrence of the coal in india is in the geological is classified into two main category Godwana coal fields and the tertiary coal fields. Now Godwana coal fields about 98% of the coal which is found in India is the Godwana coal fields and it has been it is of uh, bituminous type okay it is more black in color and the carbon content is more than 70%. So the Godwana coal field has been deposited around 200 million years ago. And uh, about uh, 80 out of 130, 13 coal fields are of Godwana coal, almost free from the moisture and contains very less amount of sulfur in it, volatile and the ash content is also very less, it's only about 13 to 30 percent. The next variety of the or the next, uh, you know, the type of the coal which is found in India is the tertiary coal fields and it has been formed in the recent times around 55 to 60 million years ago and in India about only 2% of the coal produced from the tertiary coal fields and they are of lignite variety okay which contains very low amount of carbon only 30 to 50 percent which is brown in color high sulfur content and very less amount of gold okay because in the Assam areas and all uh, the, due to the high sulfuric content, a very few amount of traces of gold was also found. But in India, the, in the tertiary coal fields, the gold mines are very other for occurrence of gold is very, very less. Coal seams in the northeasterns are highly folded, hence difficult to mine. Okay, means the uh, areas for the mining areas are very difficult because of the presence of, you know, the mountainous area. The coal seams are also associated with the limestone and slates in the tertiary coal fields. Next we are going to discuss is the petroleum. Now the first exploration of petroleum was undertaken in 1866 in the upper Assam just after seven years of the discovery of petroleum in the Pennsylvania in USA. Now oil was discovered in Assam in 1866 in the Digboy area. Till 1959, Assam was only the producer of petroleum in India. Okay, uh, after the discovery of Khambat oil fields 
in 1958. The first well Basudhara was drilled in the Ankleswar in 1960. After that, the oil was even discovered in the offshore areas of Alia Bet in Gujarat in 1970. Later, again, the offshore field in Bombay was also discovered in 1975, where the production area started in 1976. So all those of efforts was done which gives the rise in the uh, petroleum production in India. Now petroleum or the mineral oil is obtained from the sedimentary rocks of the earth. Petroleum fuels are burning gives little smoke and leaves no ash. So they are better than the coal. Petra means rock, oleum means oil. So it basically it can also be termed as the rock oil. And it is also referred as liquid gold because of its high versatile use. Now let us see how petroleum natural gas were formed. The marine sea plants and animals when they died they were buried under the sediments. Okay. Now over the time those deposits were buried under the sediments layer after layer, layer after layer. Then so the sediment eventually turned into the sedimentary rock. Now those deposits under those sediments layer or the sedimentary rock okay, due to the heat and the enormous pressure eventually turned into the petroleum oil or the gas. Now we drill through those sedimentary rocks in order to reach the rock which is containing this oil and the gas deposits. The commercial exploitation of oil in India is carried out in five reasons. The northeastern region extending over the upper Assam Valley, Arunachal Pradesh, uh, Rajasthan region. Third one, the Gujarat region extending over the Khambad Basin and Gujarat Plain, Mumbai High offshore region, and the eastern coastal region, which encompasses the area of Kaveri and the Krishna Godavari Basin also. Okay, students, the imports of petroleum in India, okay, is always been very high because the production of petroleum has never been satisfactory okay the demand of petroleum has always exceeded the production large quantity of petroleum and petroleum products are imported to india around 60 percent it is imported so the production of the mineral oil was just 2.5 lakh tons in the year 1950 to 51 well while the consumption of that time was 34 lakh tons Okay, so India produces only one third of its total requirement. So around 70, 60 to 70 percent of petroleum and petroleum products are imported to India. So a large amount of money around 5 lakh uh, 82,762 crore was spent or invested on the import of crude petroleum and petroleum products in the year 2016 and 17. So Russia, Iran, other Western Asian countries, uh, the Middle East countries are the major suppliers of petroleum to India. Another important fuel is the natural gas. The natural gas is considered to be the cleanest fuel because it emits less amount of smoke and leaves no residue after burning. Natural gas has emerged as an important source of commercial energy in the view of large reserves that has been established in the country, particularly in the south basin of coast of India. Around 70,000 crore cubic meters of recoverable gas has been estimated in this basin. So there is a sustainable increase in the supply of natural gas. Uh, natural gas is obtained right now presently from the Kaveri offshore, Nada in Kambay Basin and Tanot in the Jaisalmer district in Rajasthan. According to the latest discovery by the energy analysis in India, they are estimating around 12 billion tons of petroleum oil and equivalent natural gas present in the offshore region of India. However, natural gas is also making a significant contribution of the household sectors by the way of LPG extracted from the associated gas. And the Azirapur, Bijapur and Jagdishpur pipeline is a big venture of transporting gas through the pipeline also. Gas Authority of India Limited, GAL, was incorporated in the year 1984 for the processing, transporting, distributing and marketing of the natural gas yes so students with this we come to the end of the video thank you for watching